everyone, uh, Richard Miller here, and you're at Never Not Here, so please feel welcome. And uh, we've, t we've talked for four and a half years, um, I guess just saying it uh, grossly about spirituality, about life, about uh, a lot of different things. But in a way, uh, we're talking to the English-speaking world, and we're talking to North America. We do get around to other countries. And... Uh, in a way, it seems like everybody that we talk to has some kind of a knowledge of Eastern philosophy. And so this is kind of a slant that kind of comes from one direction. And we're always curious about uh, indigenous cultures, emerging world, uh, what's really happening uh, independent of, uh, of the Eastern philosophy or the Eastern traditions. And I'm talking about India and China and and Tibet and uh, wherever the you know those things have spread out. I'm I'm really not that knowledgeable to know where uh, it, the source of it is. And uh, so then when there's the Native American culture, well North America and also South America. So we really you know I'm I'm sure all of the the people that uh, we would talk to know about the Eastern philosophy. I'm not saying they don't know it, but I mean uh, maybe what we're really finding out is what's independent of, you know, what's more universal. And so this morning uh, we're with uh, Jamie Alvarez Acosta. So welcome. Thank you very much, my brother. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. So Jamie's from Peru, right? And uh, Yeah, I'm from Peru, from Cusco, for the more, one of the most important cities in, in, in the Andean world. No, Cusco, or the correct name is Cusco, represents the solar plexus in the Andean world. This is the translation, the solar plexus in the Andean world. <laughs> Sounds pretty vital. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, uh, was my introduction kind of right, that you have a long tradition in the Andes, and, uh, and basically that's what's in your blood. It's not so much uh, uh, imported. <laughs> yeah, you know the tradition in the Andes is is the is long, long time ago. No, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. Beginning all one the understanding of what is the nature, of what is the environment, and this is part of the tradition in the Andes. The respect for the mother earth, the respect for for uh, for everything around. Uh, the ancestors believe everyone in the mother earth is one is one big home. We share in este, this planet in one big home, and in this home we living with all the different manifestations of the life. You know, the mountains, the crystals, the animals, the insects, the the, the plants. You no, know? and we are brothers and sisters of everything and everyone in the planet. Beautifully understanding. Right. Uh, I know this is uh, really quite deep, and uh, maybe uh, the modern world might have a, a kind of a shallow view of it because uh, we've heard about indigenous populations that, you know, truly respect the earth and uh, I truly feel a part of the earth. And it's real easy for us to say, well, of course, I mean, that's a great idea, but I think it's much more than a good idea, you know? And I don't know if our talk today, if we can really kind of get to what the experience of it is or, or uh, you know, go beyond uh, the fact that respecting the earth and living with the earth and uh, being a, a part of everything that's alive and everything that manifests, even if we in the West think it's not alive, but somehow there's there's a there's a there's a force and a fe there's a force field around it and we can you know we can feel a mountain we can feel a rock probably we can feel a crystal uh, if we fo allow our focus to be there and uh, so how how can you help take us uh, deeper into this voyage that you, that you know is your life well you know in the traditions we try to connect it with yourself. The first, the first idea for working the mother earth, for work 
and have respect and reverence for everything, the beginning is este, to have reverence for who you are, to, uh, to connecting with yourself and realize you are part of everything and everything is part of you. So if you really, really don't be in your balance, don't be in your center, and don't have reverence for you, for yourself. So it's really hard to understand how is the essence of the Mother Earth. So in our words, in our, in our, in our culture, the first focus is yourself, who you are. Later is coming all the different connection with the environment, with the Mother Earth, and with everything outside. No? You need to, to look your your reality in yourself is the reality outside is the reality in the mother earth for us for to move one rock one place to the other place is really hard we say we we need to talking ask for permission no with the for the rock or we like we like to move one tree or we like to move one rock or we like to 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 move something in the nature we need to ask for permission and talking with the spirit recognize this is one form of life and this is the problem of the humanity now the humanity thinking the mother earth is die and don't think in the rock have the life and don't think in the trees have life so the only the only the only people where is or the only important being where is este in the mother earth or the where is este I don't know. The focus for the humanity is the only people that's living in this planet is the humanity. And this is the problem. The humanity don't realize we have another form of life here. We don't are ready to understand this form of life. L we Let me ask this, you know. Uh, so then uh, everything that in the Andean culture, kind of like there's a harmony with nature, and, and you actually, you know, ask, or you're maybe it's not even asking, and maybe you're just in communion with all the environment, and you can feel when things are right to move. And so, I mean, when you ask permission, does the rock give you permission, or does it does it say, well, let me think about it for, for a while, or... I mean, yeah, the life also that. asks you permission, right? I mean, because it goes both ways. I mean, the rock asks you permission uh, to be in your way, maybe. Like, uh, or, or how does, what is this relationship with, I'm, we're just saying rock, but, you know, mountain, tree, forest, yeah, uh, uh, the whole Andes. Mm -hmm. You know, in one way, you, you are part of everything and everything is part of you. But you, we need to recognize something. The rock, one simple rock, in one way is more older of you. So for this reason, need more respect of you. In this way, the ancestors say, your grandpa, your grandma, or your ancestors, we have the idea of the ancestors for the generations behind us. But the, the correct idea, and the idea where we sharing in the end is the ancestors is the mountains. The ancestors is the essence of the apples. We call apples with, uh, to the spirit of the mountains. And when you try to move something, the respect they say, okay, you like to move or you don't like to move? If you don't like to move, so who I am to move in you if you don't, if you be happy in this reality? And this is a, this is one problem for the humanity now because we coming sharing sacred knowledge and try for the people to move but if what happens if the humanity don't like to move be comfortable in this way so it's it's time to transcend and in this way the mother transforms the vibration now and move the people if you like or don't like so if I'm understanding you correctly, then you you said you had, and we started saying like uh, every everything we see is you know it has has a new respect from us. Well, okay, our fellow man does too. And so you're even are you? I think you're even saying that uh, in in human relationships, uh, people don't push each other. They just say, well, if you like, you can 
you you can be with me on this project. Or yeah. if you don't like, we you can do it. I, if you have a project, maybe I would like to be with your project. Or or actually, of course, of course. something like a, a relationship that has a lot of respect in it, and not so much pushing. Exactly. I always say with the people where where I teaching, I I am in my path. I ask the invitation for you. If you like to come in with me and walking with me. If you like to come in and walking with me, well, welcome. But in one moment, you continue your path, and I continue my path. So we share in this time and this space, but now it's forever. Each person, each in this mother earth have their own path, and we need to respect this own path. We need to respect our own personality, our own person. And this is working with, and we working in this way for, with these simple words, no? To have reverence for who you are. So, uh, is this what you call shamanism? Is, is that a good word or is there another better word that you would use uh, uh, to, to point to you know, I guess just a name, uh, where I'm not really trying to make this into a philosophy. Uh, it's a way of life. So I'm not, maybe it doesn't need a name. But I mean, uh, is there a school or, or is there actually training that uh, uh, you take to kind of, because you said first you have to know yourself. I mean, does that just happen by itself or does it take some guidance? Of course you need instrument. Of course you need support, no? master, physical masters, is coming and give with you the possibility to expanding and give the tools for expanding yourself, no? Um, well, you know, sometimes it's delicate to talking, uh, to speak uh, this word shaman or shamanism, because now, I don't know, I, I feel... It's a little hard to, to know who is the shaman. In this name, many people try to manipulate this energy of shamanism. I like the part of the pure part of this of this world. In my culture, we don't have this understanding of shaman. We have different other understanding. One example for me is Hampe. Say that. Say Hampe? that again. In my in my no, just the word. My, uh, that one word. Hampek. 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 In is one Quechua word. No? The translation is healer. No? This is the translation. And this is maybe the mission in in, in, in my path, in my life. My mission, no? Be a healer. And another person has another mission. Where is example we call chakarunas. Chakarunas is one bridge between one level and another level, we, between one understanding and another, to go another understanding. So many people working in this path, in the path of Chakarunas or in the path of Hampek. Chakarunas sounds like uh, marvelous because in order to make a bridge, somehow you have to be, you have to be in both places or you have to know both places somehow. Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, that's m so much my questions to everybody that I speak with is like, do we really understand each other? How can we make a bridge? Somebody has one set of experiences. Somebody has another set of experiences. And then anything new in our life, you know, we try to, uh, we take the word in and we don't have the feeling. So the word is a concept and we try to say, okay, there's something over there that I'm reaching for that I would like to embrace and I would like to, to feel it. And uh, how to be a chakarunas? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, chakaruna is a beautiful and really deeply word. But you know, the words is only one limitation. We try to transcend and incite in the vibration of the words. This is different. When you vibrate in the same energy of the words, no. So. The ancestors where we go and, and learn with this, uh, the grandpa, the grandma, or we go and learn with the circle of the elders, the, ancestors, the elders always say, you need to, to, to connect more for the essence of the words. 
not with the words in, in the in, in the way. Don't listen what I say. Listen my feeling. Listen my heart. Listen what I try to say with these words. So you practice how it's possible to listen the heart of the person, the vibration of the person. So then you always talk from the heart. So then if your heart is not really feeling open, then you wouldn't, or, you know, you just, is that a preparation that you, maybe you're just open most of the time, and especially when you start talking, that openness just comes out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you open your heart, it's all one process, no? Because we go to the mountains, example, we have the training, sometimes we have two, three days in the middle of nothing, no? Uh, make the exercise to be to feel connection where you your mind in one moment your mind is silence because it's finished to talking with you and beginning to talk the heart <laughs> and you beginning to listen the good part of you and beginning to feel the mother air and beginning to feel everything around you but why is true why you feel everything around why is your perception different because how is possible to explain express this part you know my english is basic <laughs> so i try to use some words <laughs> it's working it's and working good it's the... <laughs> <laughs> so what happened if you look the life in one way is you no is the life is no is you because you have the eyes to look the life. The life is one manifestation of what you feel or what you're thinking or what is your eyes. So you are responsible for all the movements in the environment around you. So when you realize this part, so in this way you feel and say, I need to be responsible for what I create in the life. And this is the most deeply knowledge. And this is listen your heart. Feel responsible for everything what you create around you. Let's say that some more, because like, because uh, uh, I don't want people just to think that this is kind of hocus pocus, and we're saying, oh, you create stuff. But in a way, I guess this is what I'm going to ask you if, if I'm receiving this right. I mean, when you say create, you I, are you saying like? It is kind of an act of creation because I'm trying to duplicate what's out there and I'm giving it uh, a feeling and I may be giving it some words or some, uh, you know, create, uh, recognizing a pattern, which, you know, maybe there's no pattern there either. You know, maybe I'm just creating the pattern because somehow that feels handy to me. But uh, uh, how is uh, how am I taking responsibility? Let's say that a couple of ways from different angles. And say, mm -hmm. how am I taking responsibility uh, for creating uh, what I see? Because, you know, everything of who you are, everything of what is your feelings, everything of what is your think, your thought, you affecting your reality. Example, if you look... <laughs> What happened in, 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 in Japan, no? With all this part of the earthquake and all this stuff. So you look this part and say, wow, this is a huge disaster. Many people die. You know, and, and, and I see many people cry and make a prayers and, you no? Know, suffering in this way. So you look this in the sad part in the part of suffering, of problems, of one big uh, disaster. But what happens if you look this in the other side and say, wow, it's possible for me to go outside and one car is fixing me and I die, or hate me and I die, or, one, or, or, or I go to the street and I fall in and I die. So. How is the the, 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 the the ceremony that made the Mother Earth for these guys to transcend in one big, big, big manifestation of the Mother Earth, no? And also go in company because you don't go alone. You go with all your community. 
So give the permission for you to transcend in family. So it's such a beautiful honor to be in this in this part, in this in this manifestation of the mother earth. No? So in this way you look the beautiful part of everything. So you feel happy and say, Wow, congratulations, and make one ceremony in this way and say, Well, trust and give more clarity, more light. So this is the part where I say everything is your perception. The humanity loves to look bad part of everything. And we are really, really, really este, um, deeply in this way. We need to change our, our perception of the reality and try to look the good part of everything and everyone. So what's added to us? What, uh, what can we take away from every experience? Of course, in one way, you could say nature is totally innocent. You know, it just has its own movements. And uh, it's us that decides to build villages on the seacoast, you know, <laughs> where those movements might happen, right? And uh, it's us that decides to build uh, flimsy structures that go real tall. So if the earth shakes a little bit, it flops over. And we're, the, we're hiding underneath there, so then it flops over on our head, you know. But we, if we were outside, I don't think an earthquake would be, be troubling or even a storm uh, or a hurricane. I guess it would be kind of windy. You'd want to hide somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it is amazing. I mean, that's a real strong take to, to actually say, okay, like wars make us all get together, right? And we, exactly. and we never would have gotten together like that. Of course, we might not even be concentrating on how great it is to be together. Uh, we might just be thinking that we're beating the enemy and thinking about, you know, I mean, I, I think people, soldiers, uh, you know, some people like to be in the army. And, and uh, I think they like it because they really count on each other in a way that we never do in our regular society. If they're out mm. on patrol or something like that, they have a brotherhood that's so much tighter than anything that we ever have with our real brothers. And uh, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be nice if we could just have that brotherhood without having the war part? And uh, <laughs> I, I'm not so sure what I want to say, but I, 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 uh, from a, a little <laughs> bit a while ago, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, where do you find the circle of the elders? Do you have to go to the villages? Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's like our society where um, the big cities, uh, people are separate and, and, you know, and running their own lifestyles. But, I mean, where is uh, this kind of feeling for nature practiced? Is this only in the villages or is this up, uh, only on the mountaintops or uh, are people also society? And like when you talk about society, that people aren't pre pushing each other because they're asking permission. Mm -hmm, is that mm -hmm. in the cities too, or is that only uh, in a small part of the Andes, or, or where can you find no, it? I think I think well, the society where we have the vision of what is society. The society is a big jail, jail. No, we are pression and we are as the in this with these limitations. No, we create limitation. We create as the rules around the society and transcend the society is part of the evolution we need to transcend this uh, form of li uh, life no what does it mean so, transcend society does that mean to build a society that another uh, society that has more room in it where where all these principles can actually exist and and, and be the foundation well in the future i think yeah but now we need to leave this 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 time of society and try to feel free in this way. For this reason, it's important to find in yourself, no? Because you feel free and try to be in a good way in all this supposedly garbage, no? What is the society? Try to feel good. Try to make the good actions. Try to 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 be good. To try to project this energy, and everyone in the society and around you change, because whatever you do for you affecting another people, affecting another reality. So the mission now is change the mind of everyone. If not, the mission is change your mind. And also, 
the part of the of the when I say jail jail and I say no is only in the no is only don't only exist in the bigger cities if no also in the smaller cities no and also this part principally exists in yourself no in the in no in the situation no in in yourself in what in what form you feel and you perceive what is your perception of this reality so if you be free and transcend this reality and transcend the illusion where is this perception of this society no in this way you'll be free some people try to be free in um with fighting some people try to be free with uh, ag aggressivity but the correct form to be free is feel free and feel free in peace with no aggression to the others no the other part where you the other beautiful part where you mentioned is the armies for us the army is the the respect for the authority no the the respect for the for the um, protection so were you in the dreams dream uh, dreaming with one person of the military or one police uh, you in this moment be connecting with the apus with the spirit of the mountains so it's beautiful understanding this part because this these guys have pure heart but need to connect more for this power and represent the authority in the physical part too but also in the essence you know let's go back a little bit and talk about when we say society is a jail and of course the jail sounds like it's a pretty severe place because it's made out of iron bars and we can't really just imagine that they're not there but maybe uh what we're talking about is the jail of, or the prison of our own concepts or the it's not even our concepts in a way i think the biggest jail is when we're just not looking at what's happening yeah then we're in the concepts so we're really not looking uh, to see uh, uh we're not here to look right so in a way it's not a jail that we have to overcome yeah. but it's just kind of like a, a habit of uh, not looking that we have to start to say hey I, at least put it in people's mind that hey that's an option you know you could look <laughs> <laughs> of course of course but this is your perception this is the part where i say no the the society no it's only in the bigger cities if not in the more small cities too so it's your perception for what is reality it's possible for you be in the jungle of the na nature or be in the jungle of the humans no in the in the bigger cities, <laughs> but if you in the jungle feel free, and be free, and 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 feel happy, so everything is happy, everything is good around you. You understand this part? I don't know. I think it's the the jungle is our mind, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I can't remember it really. Now let's say something was about. Uh, it was so confused. I don't know. Like uh, maybe straight is the path uh, to truth, or something straight and open is. Somebody said that. I don't know. I mean, I'm not. Jesus said something like that too, but I'm, that's not the one I'm thinking of. And then we're always in the <laughs> jungle, you know. And the jungle is just our thought patterns, but. <laughs> You know, one thing about it is that we get real speedy and we think that we're going somewhere. When we think we're going somewhere and we think we're doing it and uh, we could actually do it better. And, and why not? Let's just go. We'll go faster, you know, we'll get there quicker. And then that doesn't leave any time to notice where we're at or what's going on. And so then that's kind of the, the worst part of the jungle, I think, is the speed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, really funny because when you say uh, speed, I remember... Uh, what say one of my my elders he say this time for this new era after 2012 no the vibration the reality is more fast the humanity beginning to uh, to running no and now before 
the focus is running because the, the, the reality is a little slowly, no? Now, in this new vibration, the reality is different. The reality is so fast. So, <laughs> the people need no spinning, no running, if no, try to be calm. Try to be in your center because the, our reality is really, 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 really fast. So now we're inciting another vibration. The mother earth is go fast and we need to try to balance this energy and try to be more relaxed. Try to be more in your center. Try to be more patient. No? Because no, it's, it's reality... really beautiful. I mean, I just had a real hit, you know, because uh, between <laughs> what you said from when you gave the example of Japan and you said that uh, if we can somehow contemplate what's really happening here and see see these movements for what they they are or what they could be i mean they are definitely but i mean how we take them we could take them in a different way and i and then now you just said the reality is getting is fast you know and and i the old paradigm was that we could run we could run that fast and uh i guess each one of us in our own time will find out we can't keep up you know we just can't mm -hmm. And then the only option is like uh, to watch and, and come back to here. You know, it's beautiful what you said. I never even thought of that. What what's happening with the, these times? You know, and it's going going so fast. It's like uh, each one of us in our time is going to get uh, winded. You know, we're not going to be able to make it, and uh, exactly. so we're going to be put back into our essence to know who we are, who we really are. It's a gorgeous time. Exactly. Exactly. For this reason, is the ancestors say it's time to create roots in your mother earth. It's time to to be here to create your your places here in the mother earth. No, because before and we are finished this this time. The people try to float in. The people try to. To, to 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 be in the universe no and all the spirituality and, <laughs> and everything try to explore in this part well now the the energy is changed the the the, the new point of energy the new point of reference in the mother it is the andes and the andes teach this part, be connecting with your mother earth, be connecting with who you are, be connecting with your center, and everything go fast, but you go slow, you go in peace. If you're running, of course, in one moment you're falling. For this reason, it's much better walking. Is this peace compatible with the speedy society? I mean, or will it create a new society? Or and a lot of times when I think of like uh, a different economy, you know, that would include more people or some kind of different society or a different system of justice. And uh, in, w in one way, when we think of these things, we think, okay, the, in a way, the new one has to be totally separate from the old one. And when you, when you have that separation in mind, you know, it seems like there's a confrontation. And somehow, to me, it seems like it has to be compatible so that so this one could just pull toward this one. You know, this one could just... Of course. Yeah. And how could that happen? You know, like, I mean, uh, okay, it sounds like if the world is speedy and I just slow down, that I'm going to be left behind, you know, and I'm not going to... Somehow, I'm, I'm fall out of the equation. Mm -hmm. So, nothing where we... Is the same relation between what is the macro and the micro part? No, nothing what we do now is no everything what we create now is bad. No everything what we is the origins in the in the in the first societies is totally good. So we are in one process of evolution. And in this process of evolution we need to uh, use all the tools what we learn around the story of the humanity and create something new, but it's totally in complementation with what we live now. There's, no, it's only to say, 
oh yeah, it's necessary to destroy this part and create another reality. No, because if, if no, we incite in fighting, we incite in division. And this is the more bigger problem of the humanity now. Create that everything is separate. Separate. No? Your country, my country, your color, my color, your language, my language. You you are pure, I am mixed. So this is the part of the of the why teaching the the, the in what way living the humanity now. And this part no is in harmony with everyone. So we need to share. We need to absorb the most best part of everything. And for this reason we the Andean people know is one is the no, it's one culture or don't have one religion. The Andean people don't have one religion. It's a spiritual person. If you are a spiritual person, so you absorb everything for everyone. But if you are religion, so you create limitations. You create divisions. And no, it's good. No? Right. The confrontation part is so old. And, and you know, we can see that it's never, never, ever worked, you know. And... Uh... <laughs> I just had this thought, you know, it's very uh, kind of really, really beautiful because like if two, spe if two uh, separate uh, cultures are to get, are come together and they're both real speedy, there's really no room in either one for the other, right? Because they're all filled up with uh, things to do and ways to look at things and uh, systems of, uh, of getting along and not getting along. And it's only when one system is tight and speedy and the other system can open up and be peaceful that the peace can, can, can contain everything. The peace can contain exactly. what's, you know, and that's what so, so the old masters are always saying and we're not really understanding it, you know. But <laughs> it's just really starting but to make is, sense this, today. <laughs> but this is part of the essence of the eagle and the condor, no? Because... The Andes, the, the Andes no is only in South America. The Andes beginning in Chile and go to Alaska. So really, really, really the, And, the Andes is all America. This is the Andes. So the power returned for us, not only for South America. So part of the eagle and the teaching or the traditions of the eagle and the condor is the condor fly to the north and teach and liberate the ideas and the power of the eagle. But together, try to create something more. So in my culture, in, in, in the traditions, we live in more in peace, floating, you no? Know? Be in the same way of the condor, be in peace. Your society is more, 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 I don't know, more crazy. More aggressive. Be more fast. Maybe more aggressive. Of course. Of course. So the, the, the condor teach how it's possible to be more in peace and fly together. The part where you say, no, this society coming and this is absorbing. So we are in this process now to, to share each other to to try to create the compl complementary, no? And later, we go and transform and transmute everything in the mother, everything, it, the ideas of the of the humanity. These are really interesting, you know, uh, metaphors or the condor and the eagle, and it just seems like the uh, the peace is always going to be uh, the lasting. And the, and the aggressive speedy is always going to be absorbed. And I think there's a lot of cultures like that that were invaded many, many times and and uh, they just endured, you know, and then the, the aggression just kind of uh, dissipated uh, into the peace, right? Exactly. Maybe people would say, no, that's not just, and uh, well, there was a lot of pain while that was happening, but still, that's what happened, right? <laughs> and, uh, and the other way but they say, okay, uh, both of us should be aggressive, then... Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, countries or places uh, where societies were aggressive and they got invaded many, many times and there were, uh, they, they just uh, uh, were not absorbed. They were totally wiped out, you know, they were gone yeah, off the face of the I, earth. I think, 
I think why in the society is more the people is more aggressive is because the people need to survival. No? Because everyone every day need to survive in one way another reality. In one way another way. So we have a little more peace because you know in my country pues we don't have so much. We have something. And we be happy with this. No, it's important the, the, the so much. <laughs> no, you go here to the street and walking and look at the one porch, the cost way maybe one or two millions of dollars. With this reality, in 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 my country, in one family have one million of dollars, so live with all the life happy and don't feel worried for money. So. Look the different part of the cultures, no? And this is why we need to be simple, and we need, in the same way, we need to be complex because it's teaching, no? Where I, where we, I believe in my reality, in my country, the people try to be in the same way of yours, <laughs> and your culture. The people you couldn't try to be in the same way of us. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really, really funny and really fine this line, no? But I think where we are in the middle, in the middle of the path, so we uh, be comfortable and happy in this way and be in this way. See if you like this, you know, I just thought this, you know, because like it really doesn't matter where we are in the path, as long as we can see what's real, you know? And what's real is, uh, okay, we said uh, the North is more aggressive because they are feeling like they're, they're full of needs, you know, and they can't really realize that their needs are fulfilled because there's so much flux and come and go of, uh, of things, anyhow, uh, and uh, things that we think that are essential. And uh, so then we're never really sure if, if we had a few less things or a few less uh, income flow or a few less uh i don't know appliances or whatever those are things too but anyhow uh we're not so sure that our needs are taken care of and so then we have this belief that we're needy and that uh you know we're not whole and we're separate from god and all that and if you leave a simpler life i think it's easier to see that no matter what happens it's okay you know <laughs> because there's not so many things that get in the way uh, that block your vision and so then once you see that you could be anywhere on the scale and just see that, you know, now well, I got a lot of stuff, but I know my life's okay. I'm just letting go. You know, a Christian or, a, you know, a religious person might say, I'm letting go to God. But, you know, you're just letting go because something you know that yeah, functions, you know. Life is assured in that way. We're talking more for the example what happened now. Everyone thinks and say, oh, coming 2012, it's time to change, it's time to transmute, because if no, it's the, the, the world is finished, you know, the, the humanity is finished. So I say, well, is the correct motivation to change yourself for fears? Because we're living now in one culture of the fears. Try to create fears, and in this way, try to control yourself. No? So... It's good to live in this reality. It's good to transform yourself because you feel fears. No, no is the correct motivation. The correct motivation is transform and transmute yourself because you like to be much better. No, because you have fears, and this is the problem now. And we uh, we coming to teach this part. To if you like to transform yourself, if you like to transform your reality, if you like to transform your society, if you like to transform the humanity, so transform yourself. Be in peace with you, and everything is in peace around. Create this energy. No? This is the part where we try to share it. And this is the part where the ancestors and the elders give the mission and to come to these countries and try to share. I think it's really, really logical, you know, because uh, it doesn't really have, you know, you don't have to have really deep insights and anybody can figure this out. You don't have to be a genius because you could say, like, uh, what are we always doing? Whether we're working hard, whether we're playing hard, whether we're uh, actually trying to defend ourselves or ensure uh, our safety, 
we're always uh, we're always trying to not live a life without fear. You know, mm-hmm. we're trying to live a life without fear. So then, if our major uh, call to action is fear, and we're gonna be, uh, you know, we're afraid, <laughs> and we put that into motion, <laughs> and the whole point of it is to not be with fear. How? I mean, <laughs> how's that ever gonna work? You know, that's just gonna build fear. You know. Is if your motivation is feel fears, so always you feel fears, because always you thinking I am in the right way, I walking in the this is my path, so it's coming many questions, because your your motivation is this, but if your motivation is be more better person, is be more more in peace, be more in in, in relaxed way, so. Your perception every time is this. I am in the real path because it is my path. Because I am in peace. Because I am relaxed. No? So you have struggles around your path for what is your motivation. So it's really important to transform and transmute the motivation of everything. I wanted to ask a question because uh, sometimes you said uh, the elders tell us this or the elders tell us that, you know, or you referred to the elders. And um, I was wondering if that's just Mm -hmm. something that comes to you. I mean, you just uh, are like a channel or something or like that is spoken directly to you or, uh, you know, at least in our uh, culture, the Christian culture, uh, prophecy is such a big deal, you know, and they're, they're, they say that all the prophets in the Bible, uh, you know, told, told you know all these prophecies came true uh up till now anyhow and uh so then i don't know is there a is there a kind of a prophecy or is it just a kind of a communication or what do you mean when you say the elders have have spoken to us in certain ways well you touch one point really sensitive (laughs) what happened uh i'm uh, for be honest um some of these elders is the is the connection where I have with the spiritual path, no? And some of these elders is, is the elders is uh, physical. So I never like to say I I say this part because you know I am only one channel to transmute and talking with people. So I need to give honor for these energies, and because no, it's me. I am the chan, no? So when I say elders or masters or teachers, some is physical and some generally is spiritual. <laughs> so then what I was referring to here in our society is uh, mostly written, you know? And yeah. then, I mean, is there a, and there must be some written things because people are always talking about 2012 and that the Mayan prophecies have never been wrong and... Is there some written too, uh, or is that just always channeled through people like you? You know, in the Andes, you don't. The form of uh, reading, writing is the. We don't have the ability to decipher, it. decipher. It, no, we don't. The message in the Andes is not clear. And. You say it's not as clear? No, it's clear. Because este, in the Andes, we don't have este, inscriptions in the same way of Egypt or Mexico, no, the Aztecas or the Mayas. But we have another form of inscription. What is this? Is the um, the legends. No? But more of this is coming with channels. People are uh, receiving the knowledge in the in the Andes and sharing with the with the humanity, and it's really really strong because many maybe one healer is go and working in one in, in in the mountain and receive one message and go to the place where he received the message and re- and finding everything around of this message. So a little by little by little, the spirit teach with us how it's possible to rebuild 
reconstruct our society, our culture, our society. It's really beautiful this part because we don't have nothing of the Christian, so we need to remember and we need to connect it more with the heart and try to recuperate who you are or how we are. So in other words, like le the <laughs> legends are like a uh, uh, spoken tradition and then somehow uh, channels or uh, shamans or healers uh, maybe feel moved even to go to the place of those legends and then uh, get an update sort of like, you know, they get they can find more details. In other words, yeah. the, that's almost like a living legend. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, example, I have the experience of one of my... My teachers, no physical. He is go and make one ceremony in close to the coast, one mountain, and he visualized one temple in the middle of one mountain. So he have one friend, and the friend is uh, archaeologist, and he go and make the exploration of this mountain and finding the place. So, how this guy say, how is possible? I don't know. The healer, the shaman, in the middle of the ceremony, say, here, in this point, exists one temple. And you need to find it. So, we have the knowledge in our genes. We have the knowledge in ourselves. So, it's time to recuperate this knowledge. Because the ancestors maybe don't make the inscriptions on in the in the in the rocks or in one paper or something but their their ancestors made the inscriptions in our, in our genes <laughs> or they're talking to you you know i mean uh i maybe a little uh, different question but uh you said uh the andes are from chile all the way to all the way to alaska actually and uh yeah but I mean, uh, we've heard, you know, we're not very knowledgeable here, uh, at least I'm not. <laughs> so I've heard of Peru, I've heard of Ecuador and things like that, but I never really knew that. Are there uh, village cultures or cultures that uh, are really into this same uh, healer, healing or healers uh, all the way down through Chile and all the way down uh, to the, the very t uh, tip of uh, South, South America? You know, the energy in the in the America is coming with all the Andes, and we have different cities around of this big country, where is America now, no? So, be, in, in the south is the Incas, in maybe close more for the middle is the Mayas and Aztecas, and here in the north is the native communities. The native people have so much knowledge, one philosophy really, really strong, so these guys have the, the power now to transform and transmute the reality. For this reason, we're coming and sharing the knowledge. The native communities in the Andes with the native communities here, now is in the process of working together and sharing the medicine. Because one beautiful part that these guys know and, high and have and the society need is the pipe the pipe and the smoke for peace. You know, all this knowledge is fantastic. And we are in the process of sharing. Now the native community, I feel, is more open for receiving people and try to teach more the essence of the native communities here. You know, in US and Canada. And it's really, really strong. I, I feel the movement of the native communities here in, in Canada and in the States is really, really strong. And the people need to look and go and learn. Do you physically it's talk beautiful. talk with uh, North, northern uh, native people? I mean, are there conferences yeah. and other time, uh, meetings? or I, We used to call it powwow. I don't know. I think we're really watching the cowboys yeah. and Indians too much. But, you know, is there some kind of like native, uh, uh, you know, uh, movement for like the south and north of the of uh, native peoples to uh, 
to come together? Or, I mean, do you participate in these things? Of course, we have one conference in Trent University for the PhD program of uh, Native Studies and Indigenous Studies. So we share one big, big conference, big party. It's one big uh, event where the Andean people and the Native well, the people of the South and the people of the North is be together. And it's one beautiful example of what is possible, fly together, the eagle and the condor. No? It's really, really strong and really beautiful to share the medicine and to, to look at everything what I believe in my culture, in my, in my society, in one comparison with what is the reality of the native communities here is totally one complementary. Everything is go together with different understanding, with different words, but everything, all the medicine is the complementary. Really beautiful. And we now try to be in ceremony and try in this way of ceremony, try to transform and, and transmute and supporting our societies in our places. You know, I, uh, at one time I, I found out that uh, the largest uh, Native American university, I think it's in Kansas City, I might be wrong, but it's somewhere around there. And I was actually on an airplane and flying next to a woman, and it turned out she was a uh, one of the li or the librarian in that university. And so I had some conversation, but she didn't seem like it was totally open, you know. That I mean, at least to a white man, you know, like uh, an invader. And I was kind of like curious, like I really wanted to go in and see what was going on. But I mean, is there an openness there to uh, outsiders, or right now is it kind of like a um, uh, incubation period where this you know, where uh, n the native energy wants to just congeal and, and come together and, and feel itself? or uh, uh... I, I, I think now it's more open. I think now the, 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 the people for the native communities is more open to teach. And this is also part of the project that these guys have, no? To begin in, and open more the society, the sacred knowledge for everyone, because try to share, no? And maybe it's more what happened with the, for the story before, but now is the, we live another reality. And now in this other reality, we need to, to be gentle and sharing, no? Try to, try to teach. If you teach more, so the, the people give more value for for the essence of who you are one beautiful thing we say is you don't love no you love whatever you know if you don't love know nothing or something so of course you don't love this reality so how is possible for the other people in the society give more value for the native communities is if the native community teach and show who this, how, how is this community, who is this community, no? So in this way, the people beginning to respect, have more respect and, and beginning to love this reality. So, and this is, this is amazing. And this, I think, this is the, the essence of rescue, the self of the, each North American people, return to the communities, return to the to the native people because you are born in this land for some reason and the reason is is to be connecting with the essence of the land you know now is the we know canada is more open to receive this knowledge no to value to value more the essence of the native communities you know the problems in the states is uh, try to re repress this uh, this uh, this community, and I think part of rescue the essence of all the culture from North American culture is, is to give value to the native community, no, and give is to go and learn, but go and learn with is to, with reverence, no. 
with, with hum, uh, humildad, hum, humility, no? Don't try to, to uh, take out, no? To say, oh, this, uh, you need to teach me because nobody need, <laughs> no? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm just kind of like a kid that watched tele too much television, you know. So, but you know, when we uh, we kind of knew there was a chief in the, in different tribes, and there was a medicine man. We, you know, but now I think that uh, really, uh, medicine women are the are like really the ones that are holding the the teaching, holding the the spirit alive, and I think that uh, the woman in the North American uh native people is really kind of the pillar of uh of the old knowledge and um i even think i met a seneca man and he was kind of trying to explain me the tribe and stuff and i i think it's at least the lineage is kind of like matriarchal i don't know if it's totally uh matriarchal or what but i mean uh is a is a medicine woman in the south american uh native people uh uh, a strong force, or are are you guys all men down there? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, is the in in my country, men and women is the same. We have for this reason the most important before God, before God, we give honors to the Mother Earth, and why we say Pachamama, no, or Mama Pacha, we say because. The mother earth is the most important, and we know the value for the female energy because this planet has female energy. <laughs> so, of course, all the women now in this have so much power, have so much energy, have so much as the knowledge to share. But also, it's delicate this time because the women have so much power and need to make value also for the main energy because now in this new era the 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 female energy is more high why for the communication the women have one power of the communication is unbelievable but in this way the women need to try we need to try and working in balance no the men need to value more the essence of the female energy, and the energy the, the women need to value more the men energy. So in this way, we are in in complementary. Does communication no? mean you know speaking with the elders, or kind of just being uh, open to uh, receive intelligence from the universe or from the Mother Earth? What does it mean by communication when you say women have a high power of communication? Uh, in everything, my brother, the women. If you if you go to conference of spirituality, maybe the ninety percent is women and the ten percent is men. No, so the process of transformation or transmutation of the women now is stronger. Why? Because it's daughters of the mother earth. So feel the new vibration before us. No, the men. For this reason, I say. The women now have the power to transform and transmute everything. But in this way, if this is, she needs to give value for the men energy, and the men energy need to give value for the female energy. No, we need to, to go together. If no, this part produce one disbalance in the mother or two. The women go here and the men go down. No? And this is one Danger uh, reality, what is possible to live, because the women, the women have all the power of communication, and now is the these these women have their, their responsibility to to be in balance. How can this uh, this tendency uh, that women are so good at communicating? How can we let, let the women that are listening now? whether they're Western women or whether they're indigenous women or whether they're mm, women from uh, emerging countries, uh, how can they, is there anything they can take from this, this idea and say, like, I can, I can allow my communication to flower in a bigger way that I never thought I could? 
Uh, is there something that uh, that all women should uh, uh, maybe just uh, take upon themselves and and uh, kind of uh, find some kind of consolidarity uh, with uh, with all peoples? Uh, the women need to hold in the energy, no? Because it's the part of the of how is the essence of the woman. Because we're talking for two energies. One is the matrimony, another is the patrimony. No? What is the patrimony? The patrimony is give. The energy of the man is give. The energy of the woman is holding. So the, now is the turn of the woman to hold in the energy of the humanity. Not only the, the energy of the woman, it's not the humanity. The energy of the man. No? Try to hold in and give more power and try to este, support in the transition of everyone in the in this in this humanity. You know? It sounds uh, like such a beautiful a challenge, mission. you know. It sounds like such a beautiful challenge because when you say hold, because uh, most of the times we're trying to push stuff away, right? And then like our exactly. example of uh, with Japan. And if you can hold even what looks like a tragedy, then you can somehow uh, uh, be available for, to get its inner message, to get the, its inner teaching. And so then, I don't know, is this what you mean by holding? Yeah, yeah, totally. Because, you know, the woman, in the essence of the woman, have this, uh, this property, no? This, the woman holding the life. The woman creates one life in the internal way. So what happened with the disbalance is because Many of the female energy, many of the women like to live in the way of the men. No? And the men like to live in the, in the way of the women. So we need to respect each rule and each reality. No it's possible for the men to have the same perception of one woman. And no it's possible for the women to have the same perception of the men. So it's in the nature of the woman. The women need to be more in the center. For this reason, we say, remember who you are. Be in your center. Be more in your nature. Be more in who you are. In, in what is your mission in this mother earth? Are you saying so it's the a, in this Are you way, saying it's like a mistake to, uh, for women to try to live like men and men to live like women? Because uh, somehow, I don't know, we've been hypnotized to think that uh, somebody's dominating somebody else and that we ought to get in there and have our I mean you know if we could just be who we are it sounds like we should just stick with uh, our the powers that we have and and, and uh, build on those yeah you know the most important is the balance no be in balance and try to to feel and working in balance you know the woman is, is have more the power of the connection for the mother now and this, uh, uh, the women perceive all the reality in a more high way now of the men. So it's time to go looking home, look, uh, I don't know, if you have one son, if you, have, uh, you are married, if you have a husband. So try to support it to the husband, try to support in your son to have this understanding, to be in this understanding, and to feel uh, that exists something more. No, this is the work of the women, and the work of the men is supporting this reality of the women. Try to working in family. No, try to working in in, in, in communion. No, because we are uh, the same of the women. This is the confusion. The society say the woman and the men is the same. No, we don't are the. We are two different essences. The part we try to, we need to say, we 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 have, we need to respect the essence of each reality. Yeah, I I get it. I totally get it. You know, because like a lot of times we think balance means I have to contain everything and express everything equally, and that's not the balance we're talking about. We're talking about more about respect and tolerate tolerance for the other and the way they're doing it, even if we don't understand it. In a way, maybe we have to imbibe some of it because you can't. You said you can't love what you don't know, and so then exactly. we have to imbibe some of it so we can love 
and that love will allow the tolerance and, and uh, allow that uh, the woman to come out in her power. I'm speaking from the man's point of view because I'm kind of stuck here, but <laughs> so that the we have our limitations too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> One question: I maybe we can deal with it pretty quickly, or maybe it has a lot of insight into it too. But I was, you know, because we, we were talking about An the Andes and the mountain people and the backbone of the continent and so on. And uh, I just wanted to know, I mean, that's like an energy we're saying it's real clear, it's a lot of clarity, and, and it just feels uh, somehow from the mountain, it's just kind of like a metaphor from the mountaintop, you can just see. What is the energy of the Amazon when you go down, uh, down the eastern slopes? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the energy of the Amazon is really one mysterious. You know, when you go in the jungle, and sharing and be in this place so it's really really mysterious the jungle is system you know many things dangerous but also you have so much medicine so the jungle is I don't know where I have the opportunity to go and be in the jungle and feel this is the really magic and really, I feel so much respect because you don't know nothing. You're walking and don't have one clear, clear idea for nothing. You think something, some small, well, <laughs> the Paul would say my, my, one of the two guys, you know, in, in the jungle, say, Everyone were coming here feel uh, scary for the bigger uh, animals, no? The, the huge snake, the jaguar, no? But really, 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 you need to be careful for the small insect. <laughs> These guys is more dangerous, <laughs> no? <laughs> so you really, really don't know. But the energy of the jungle is such a beautiful, beautiful laboratory, so much medicine, so much to share, so much to, to teach, and have so much to, to give for this humanity. But we need to protect this part. It's kind of like the society. We're saying the speed is so, so, so fast that uh, we don't know what to make of it. And then and we just, it kind of throws us on into we don't know anything. Uh, and that's the same with the jungle as for, uh, it sounds like you're saying. Do you have contact mm -hmm. with jungle people? Uh, do jungle people have this, uh, have some kind of a mastery over this, uh, this, these dark forces or this, uh, uh, this mystery? Uh, and uh, Yeah, the jungle people working more in this spirituality and have medicines, no? It's the, I don't know, now in this is reality is really famous, the ayahuasca, no? <laughs> The, the the plan and I think this is the this is part of the essence of the jungle no so and it's one mysterious and the essence the people in the jungle have all this perception of what is reality in a different way of us in a different different way but have more respect for the sacred medicine the sacred plants go on connecting with this reality. And this guy think the, 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 the remedy for all the signals in the humanity is in the jungle. And I agree with this, with this perception. Right. In other words, uh, I guess I, I was confused, but the, uh, the, the substances like ayahuasca and so on are, are not really from the Andean people. They're, uh, they're more into the... You could see it. It's just the jungle that you said is mysterious, and also our consciousness, the jungle of our consciousness is mysterious. And, and that, is that what you're speaking about, the medicines? Or, or are you just saying medicine like yeah. for, uh, for Western diseases? Just medicine. No, for, for... Sorry? Go ahead. No, you say it's medicine... Well, I mean, it's medicine for our... our uh, our psychological hang-ups, really, because we don't know who we are, right? And so then we're, we're, we're living a life that's not real. 
of course. Well, you know, we call medicine because it's a master plant. This this plant is coming and teaching. We the science give one name is a plant uh, antiogenous plants or plantas antiogenas, where is these plants have spirit, and this uh, this spirit teach yourself whatever you need. No, no, don't teach what you like. You know what you need. This is different, <laughs> huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we got to have that uh, distinction that we can understand. You know, is this just what I like, or is this really what I need? And so then, <laughs> is that when you need a master to tell you, or some uh, somebody could say, "Hey, I don't know what we." Re- this this answer is necessary funding here in your heart, no? Right. No, that's this is the be- what I need, but no, it's what I like. Yeah, that's the perfect answer. Of course. That's the only answer that could actually do anything, really. <laughs> Nobody else can really tell you how you should be. And uh, one, of my, one of my brothers say, you have the first and the last word. So the, all the decision is for you. No, You create everything. Let me ask you a little bit, uh, another question, because uh, you referred to ceremony. You know, a lot of times when you spoke of uh, different uh, uh, healers and different, uh, maybe different peoples, and somehow you, you mentioned ceremony sometimes. And so a ceremony is somehow, what does that do? I mean, you're acting something out and you're symbolizing it and taking some time to put your attention on it. And uh, what is it? What's is there? Are there sacred ceremonies? Are there a lot of them? Uh, do you do it all? Uh, is, are there? Are they seasonal? Uh, that uh, they need to be practiced at certain times, or is it more like the season of our life, like when people are born, when people die? And no, I I believe with the ceremony is to feel the life in one sacred part, in one in one sacrality. This is ceremony, and the responsibility for the humanity no is, is be in ceremony, live in ceremony. This is the mission. Okay, each moment is sacred. Each moment have many things to teach with, with you. So this is beautiful. If you if you live in this reality, so you live in another way, in a, in a sacred and pure way, because you know ceremony is everything. Ceremony is everything. It's your perception of the life. And we do ceremonies for um, something where we feel reverence. If one, if one baby coming, you feel reverence for this baby and say, wow, the magic part of the life. If one person dies, so you feel reverence for the, for the transition to another level of consciousness. If you make one ceremony for the solstice, you feel reverence for the father son that is coming and give with you one transition. No? But always we feel reverence for everything upside. Where we have reverence for ourselves, for who you are, so you live in one deeply and profound uh, ceremony every day and every second in your life. Wow. Jamie, you give such powerful answers. <laughs> such beautiful answers that really can touch, touch your heart. I, th- I totally thank you for that. Uh, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, I guess I'll say, well, I'll ask one more thing and we'll just uh, see what, what happens. Yeah. Because uh, you're a healer. So then, in order to be a healer, people have to be sick, right? <laughs> or need healing. <laughs> And so then sometimes they say the quickest way to heal is to realize there was no sickness, you know. <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, what is it, you know, in other words, a lot of people come up with a, a therapy or something like that, and they see everybody is needing their therapy, and they they see a world of sick, sickness. And uh, I don't think that's what's happening over there, but say some comments <laughs> on what is the, what is the real healing. Well, you know, uh, in one way or another way, everyone has things. And in this way, we 
why these guys produce or why everyone in the humanity produce signals is because in one or in another way create confusions. We live in confusions, we live in illusions, and we need we feel these illusions is true. So and in and where we believe this part, we produce this balance in ourselves. So in this way come in the healing part. The healing part is uh, try to teach, okay, understand this reality where you live now, and you think your life is one disaster. No, it's totally in this way. Your life have good things now. All this situation is one beautiful challenger for you because it's time for you to transcend the reality. So in one way, we say, where you leave one challenger in your life now, so it's one preparation for tomorrow. So be, if, if one challenger is coming in your life, so you are ready to transcend these challengers. If you don't are ready to transcend some challengers, don't come in, in your life. All these difficult situations, all the problems is coming in your life is because you are ready to transform and transmute this reality. So you need to accept this responsibility. And if you feel this is the um, this problem is so difficult, so prepare them because it's only one preparation for tomorrow. So tomorrow the challengers is more stronger. <laughs> so no, so always I I teach this part and say okay, it's your perception. So in this way we try to create harmony, balance in the person. Try to give good energy. No. And in the same way where you healing one person or supporting one person, in this way you supporting yourself. So I believe the healers is the person who have more signals <laughs> in the in the world because if you supporting some people in this way you you supporting one part of you. So then uh, well, are, you say, also, are you saying that tell me say more about perception? You know, like, I mean, did you mean the perception that you have that see, can, can see balance in chaos? Or is it just a perception that uh, the people that come to you uh, that throws them off? Or uh, what did you mean by perception? Well, you know, uh, the people is, is bold because you have one perception of, uh, of what is reality. And the other people have another perception of what is reality. So if we try to talking and say everything is good in the life, the challenges, the problems have a good side too. The same, the same example for what happened in Japan, no? Everything has two phases. So we try to teach uh, to the people, it's possible, look the good part of everything. And we working in harmonized three levels of conscious, no? What is mind, physical, and spiritual part, or the, the part of the soul. If we harmonize these three levels of conscious, so we live in harmony. We live in a happy way, no? In the happy land. <laughs> so this is the word. We need to, we try to harmonize these three levels of conscious. So, be in one healing session or be in one ceremony or be in, I don't know, in one place and only talking, I always try to support in the integration of these three worlds. Because now, in this uh, more for the day or day, we make divisions. And the people can create and say, why I need to work in my body if I am a spiritual person? Or why I need to go and working and harmonize my mind if I working in the spirituality. So nothing is separate. Everything is part of one. It's the same with my one of my elders say. The four elements don't know it's different. The four elements is only one in a different manifestation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I've learned so much about uh, indigenous cultures, about the people of the Andes, about uh, 
about he healing and uh, I guess we're always talking about healing because I don't know if we're sick or not but <laughs> maybe it's the correct word healing hmm? because this is the return for yourself return who you are and all the limitations where we have in our life we create these limitations the only form where we transcend these limitations is healing ourselves but in this way of healing is also liberate our limitation and be free and be in peace all the different uh, spirituality religions um, sacred uh, I don't know sacred knowledge everything go only one energy what is the energy peace nothing more if you have peace you don't need to go and be part of one religion you don't need to be part of one sacred knowledge or the tradition nothing if you be in peace and living in peace this is everything Peace, peace to me sounds, you know, it's peace is completion. Of that we're complete. This is the part where say peace is self-realization. Self-realization. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie, I really thank you. It's my pleasure, my brother. It's my pleasure. Thank you for uh, for um, make this connection and, and give with me the opportunity to express. You, you uh, create and you do one big, big mission. Sharing all this stuff, be the chakaruna, the bridge. <laughs> between yeah, I guess I'm a two. chakaruna, <laughs> so I am a bridge. <laughs> Jamie Alvarez Acosta. <laughs> My brother. And thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for uh, watching. Uh, we're trying to make a bridge. And make some new bridges that we maybe haven't made before. So, thanks for coming. I uh, I'll try to follow on this uh, uh, many times. So, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, my brother. It's my pleasure to be here, and thanks God for all this the reality and this present. Thank you for the. Presence. <laughs>